Aloha, Kamaka Brown on V93FM.com. I'm here with Any Talks, Any Rivera. What's up, Any? Nothing much. Look at <laughs> that was like in the hood. What, what is? See me? What is that, oh, girl? Man. Yeah, I painted oh. a picture of rocking here. Okay. <laughs> Talking about be- being in the hood, we have the a major OG in the house, uh, Uncle Dan Legronio, the yes. OG. Yes, sir. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and oh, 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 look like we get Darth Vader over there oh, in the yeah. corner. <laughs> It's a party at Sin Radio. By the way, we also have on the phone, and I know he's wondering what the heck is going on, none other than uh, Kumu Kainoa Embernati in New York City. What's up, Kumu? Hey. hey. Aloha. 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 Man. So, Kumu is a Hawaiian island native of uh, Honoka'a. Honoka'a represent... <laughs> yes, Malasada. Hey. <laughs> By yeah. way of Hilo, and you're now living in New York. You're a musician, Hawaiian language and cultural educator. Um, and my goodness, what a transition from the humble um, uh, residents of uh, Honoka and, uh, and Hilo all the way. I think you told me when we were talking about earlier, you went from Hawaii, the big pineapple, to New York, the big apple. <laughs> yeah, big pineapple to the big apple. Power of big island. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, you know, you shared um, with me about a house party while you were at UH Hilo and a chance meeting with somebody by the name of How Nani that put you on a very interesting path. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, you know, trying to go into university, um, going to college, actually. It was kind of a big deal in my family, and I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, I had a good friend, and she was in the Hawaiian language program there. She's like, hey, you like all paina? So we went to one of our friend's house, and I showed up, and I was kind of tripping out. I was like, okay, kind of plenty older people, and everybody talking Hawaiian. You never really tell me this was going to be a Hawaiian language only party. I don't speak Hawaiian. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, after a couple poo poo, inu inu, <laughs> had, um, we had, I had this, I met this woman, and her name is Honani Bernardino. And, you know, she was such a, a, she played a big role in, you know, having me take a look at learning Hawaiian. Um, you know, growing up, it, it was kind of like, oh, you go learn Japanese, go learn Spanish, because that's what a job's at, right? Mm-hmm. And I would never really thought of, learning Hawaiian and becoming a, a successful student, in fact, becoming just successful at all after I graduated. So she she became almost like a second mother to me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the catalyst, I guess, of mm-hmm. my learning Hawaiian. So, you know, all the way from Hawaiian language classes to the master program in Hawaiian literature, that is such an amazing journey um, that was almost unintended, but it was meant to be, looks like, huh? Yeah. Um, so I, after I did my uh, undergraduate, I was kind of like, what am I going to do now? And the professors and the staff and faculty at the College of Hawaiian Language at UH Hilo was really supportive, almost like family. So it was like, you should go do the teacher education program. So I did. And with that program, you really take a look at, you know, what is Hawaiian ways or what are some other indigenous practices about creating learning opportunities for our people and for, you know, visiting people um, instead of using Western models. So they had on master's program, you know, after you part a teacher education program, you can actually fulfill a lot of the credits in their master's program. So that was in what? Indigenous language and culture education. And then I was just like super into what I was doing. So I went sign up for the literature, the Masters of Arts in Hawaiian Literature too. So that was kind of small kind of burnout. <laughs> I would finish one Masters, the other one, I don't know, it's still dangling in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty intense. But, you know, from what, what I'm hearing is in your heart and your soul, there was this burning desire um, to get your arms around and to embrace the Olelo. That, that, that's what that's what I'm oh. hearing. You nailed it. That's exactly it. So let's let's talk about the Hawaiian language just for a moment over here. So Kumo, you have said the tongue is the paddle that navigates the canoe. Can you help us understand what that means? Yeah, I mean, if you have someone at the at the steering of any ship, especially a canoe. And we all know how we all were 
kind of brought up that one canoe is like one island that everybody has a kuleana or responsibility, especially the person who's steering it. So we consider not just the symbol of the, the paddle that looks like a tongue, but we consider, you know, the destination where we arrive on a canoe. We start to think about from this, you know, I would say traditional Hawaiian proverb, we start to think about our communication and our listening expression and how language really starts to shape the relationships um, and the world around us. And so I think from this from this really awesome Hawaiian proverb, you have how the tongue is like the, the steering, uh, uh, language is like the, the steering paddle of the canoe. I think if you have a great steersman, you go to great destinations. <laughs> but if you have somebody that's not really proficient in steering, uh, then I don't know. Maybe Pilikia. <laughs> maybe you enter certain storms. Maybe you know the whole vog and flip. <laughs> you know, so Pilikia. Mm. You know, but I, I think I, it's I, such a great um, comparison between language and, and canoe canoe learning. Kumo, I got to share with you because I just had one flashback right now when I was paddling canoe. I was living in Kailua Kona. I was paddling for a canoe club called Kawika Ole Canoe Club, and I was a steersman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so get outside, you know, and um, uh, we outside um, along in front of a uh, Kamehameha, King Kamehameha Hotel. We're going out toward Kona Surf, and um, you know the coach is on board, uh, you know, and, uh, and he's and he's going. You know what, Kamaka? We gotta find somebody with a shorter name because you keep carving your name out um, of, of, by, by steering. You know, you, you're supposed to keep your eyes on a particular point. You know, um, but you keep moving around. We gotta find somebody with only a couple. You know, Kamaka is too long of a name. You, you're carving your name out in the ocean. <laughs> How's about hui? Yeah, hui. <laughs> We're gonna just call you K from now on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> So, Kuma, you also said that everyone who studies Hawaiian contributes to the revitalization of the language. How is this true? Well, you know, as right now I'm, I'm really enjoying my doctoral learning. And what I'm looking at is language ideology. So the ideas we all have about language and learning and whatever, anything around language. And what I'm finding in some pretty awesome literature is that sometimes, right, in a revitalization movement, these language ideologies can be positive and help out. Sometimes they can be negative. And so I think in my, with my students, what I'm trying to have is a really diverse group of people, whether they're living in Hawaii, whether they're not, they're Hawaiian or not, whether they dance hula or, any, or practice any other cultural, Hawaiian cultural thing or not, but what I think the research is saying about other indigenous, endangered indigenous languages and their revitalization movement is that when there is a diverse community learning the endangered language and producing knowledge and materials, whether it be a Facebook post, an Instagram, a Pinterest page, um, or texting, calling, or like a Today, right now, we're just having a conversation about Hawaiian. The life of that language, it, it starts to expand a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not fully revived or saved, but it's just that much more alive. And, and it seems to me with every breath, and uh, with every, um, you know, no matter how small the steps are, it is one more step closer to the realization uh, and uh, like you say, the revitalization of um, the living language that is Hawaiian. You know? Yeah, and you know, I think sometimes in the in this re- Hawaiian language revitalization movement, it's hard because we have elders and descend direct descendants of those elders who are very important. You know, they're native, and sometimes they're native speakers. But then we have a lot of new people who maybe aren't that native, who never been to Hawaii. But their commitment and loyalty and aloha to just contribute to the best they can comes from a really, really good place. And I think as a community, especially us Hawaiian diasporic peoples, right, all the Hawaiians living outside of Hawaii, and plus our families back at home, I think that's where we got to take a look at what kuleana are we doing, you know? 
Right. How are we um, hosting, you know, which is a traditional Hawaiian practice, ho'okipa. Mm-hmm. Right? How are we hosting our guests in this movement? That leads me to this, uh, Kamaka, uh, and Kumu, actually to you, Kumu. Now that your halal has grown uh, and you have so many learners, I, my question is, is, what is your system for teaching and for the learners to pick up what you're uh, sending out? You know, and mahalo for that question because I think when I started in 2016, I think we all used to the traditional ways of education, Mm -hmm. right? Right. An institution tells you what to learn and how to learn it, Mm -hmm. when to learn it, and where to learn it. Mm -hmm. And I struggled with that, especially, you know, requiring my students to pay me. I mean, I didn't have another job, and... You know, living in New York City is not the cheapest place in the world. And I think for the first year, I struggled with charging people, you know, especially if they're Hawaiian. How are you going to charge somebody when they want to learn about who they are, where they come from, Mm -hmm. especially the language? Mm -hmm. And so trying to not go off tangent into tangents here, but um, when a student comes to the to Halo, right, I first want to learn their intentions. And then I learn what technologies do they use? Where are they located? Right? And, and then we customize and personalize the learning. Mm-hmm. And if they want to learn in a group, then we network mm-hmm. through social media, through email. Um, we have this one kupuna. She's in hospice. And she, I have classes with her over the telephone. Mm-hmm. Right? I call the landline, her nurse, her caretaker hooks her up, and then she's like, baby, we can talk 20 minutes. I just like talk story. And then I was see in my ohana for one week. Aww. And then the next half hour, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't want to order a textbook. She just wants to me to kind of like help her through it, talk story. Mm-hmm. So it's a great way not only to meet the diver- diverse needs of different learners, but it's a great way for people to feel like they are making a contribution, whether it's in five minutes or mm-hmm. a one-hour class. Right especially for the self-directed learners. I've been trying to set up and learn different technologies where people can just go and, you know, on their own time, they can make, do the homework, hmm. right? So we have a set curriculum, but how people approach it is, happens in different ways. So I'm, I'm hearing that it's so inclusive. Uh, the, oh, definitely. Yeah, and, and that you are embracing various different, uh, not only learning styles, but communication uh, capabilities to reach out to folks so that no one is left out. You know, everybody can can learn and uh, absorb in whatever media they choose to, and that that is, I think, very very amazing. Yeah, you know, and people think I get one whole team, but it's just me. <laughs> you know, and we're not. And the thing is, you should. The people say, "Oh, you should go for a grant. You should, you know, any kind." I mean, I do have my nonprofit that I'm developing. Uh, we. You know, 501c3, everything. But for me, one thing I want to challenge, too, is, you know, I don't want what is happening to the hula to happen to our olelo. Mm. You know, this industrial complex of only those of cultural wealth, you know, have access and Uh. prestige in our communities. Because Mm. it occurs to people who want to help out as cultural authority. And, you know, I don't think I have to talk more about that. We all been to that, <laughs> you know, ho'ike or <laughs> ah, <laughs> that oh yeah. venue. And it just feels a little uh, uncomfortable sometimes, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I think Olelo, you know, can really recontextualize a lot of that, especially when, you know, we get new apps coming out like Duolingo. Mm-hmm. We get uh, language drops, you know, and we have these non-Hawaiian people making money off helping out. Uh, so I thought, you know, I got to relaunch this program in such a way that it's by everybody mm-hmm. for everybody that's interested in this work. Oh, and we do it together I'm worldwide. Loving it. I'm loving it. Oh. Hey, you know what, come on. You know what going to happen? Uh-oh. You're going to make lots of kala. <laughs> <laughs> you said we go make plenty what kala you think so oh yeah you know it's funny right when you give all that up and you give it away that's when people that's really it. want to donate that's so we all, i do accept donation but you know i i really i'm just 
even it's been heavy on my heart dealing with money and now I just feel so happy yeah. and I love being generous yeah. and you know now we have Kumuhula like one Kumuhula based in uh, Reno wow. you know and it's so great because we even get Lomi Lomi ku- Kumu mm. we get um, cultural astrologists mm. linguists we have stay at home moms <laughs> who are becoming resources whether Sweet. in Ohio Lebanon yeah. Montreal Sweet. Yeah. for their family friends who are practicing hula feather work whatever they're doing mm. right and so it's just like so amazing wow. that these people want to be a contribution to their communities you just s- because you're starting something worldwide mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. we so, <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners it's a that, kako thing kako. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good bumper sticker it's a kako thing yeah Ooh, I, like I wish that. i could say i made that up but i heard them someplace <laughs> oh, but that's not mine <laughs> you know for our listeners that just join us we're talking to kumu kainoa Ebernati, who is uh, in, um, uh, in in New York, and um, we're talking about halaolelo.org, uh, and uh, you can go to that um, website and learn all about um, what uh, Kumu is um, uh, has kind of uh, started. You know, he's he's been like the the fire starter behind this, um, and and kind of a. Um, a rebel rouser, hey, you troublemaker, you, you, you're up there, you, you break, you're breaking the mold. This is this is something, this is something that is out of um, you know the traditional, and um, using the technologies and using um, you know that what is out there um, to forward the uh, the va to forward um, you know toward um, learning the olelo, and that's awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, you know where credits do though. It's always to the kupuna because when we look at how they use technology, especially the newspaper, mm. always I start to ask myself every day, what would they do mm. in the year 2019 today mm-hmm. with all of the resources we have? Yeah. So true. So so true. So you know, we have a choice to ancestor something now, or we just wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ground, yep. or wherever we go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, thank you so much for your time, Kumu. I really appreciate um, uh, your sharing your mana'o with us here today. And um, we're going to tell all of our listeners um, to go to halaolelo.org, learn more about uh, the various different ways that you can learn the um, um, Olelo Hawaii. Uh, and um, you can even you know get in touch with uh, Kumu Kainoa on uh, his Facebook page, um, Kainoa Ebernati, or um, Halau Olelo Facebook page, and you can communicate that way if you have more questions and, and want to find out more about um, about the learning process. Um, anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before um, before we head out to, in our in 